Is Morse code the best potential amateur radio mode for preppers or those that are preparedness minded, emergency preparedness, etc.? I think so, and I'm going to try and break down my topics here today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Thanks for watching. All right, so some of you may be shaking your head feverishly and, and, and clutching your bow fangs. Let me be really clear. I'm talking about HF ham radio. Uh, you can definitely do Morse code on the VHF, UHF line of sight bands and frequencies, but I'm not necessarily making that argument. Uh, I think also handy talkies are pretty cool, pretty legit. All the radios that exist in that space for personal preparedness and local comms remains as valuable as I would say anything else. Today I'm talking about HF, and specifically we've got three contenders in the ring. We've got single sideband, microphone talk into, communicate via voice. You have digital, things like JSA call and WinLink specifically. I've done videos about both those things, you can go watch those if you want. And then now the new contender, something that I have become more proficient in, Morse code. So what are my thoughts on that? All right, so I'm gonna cover single sideband and digital and explain their value points and then the drawbacks. Single sideband just works because you just talk into a mic and there you go. The downsides are that you're gonna to need to have a radio that puts out enough power to give you effective communication. I don't necessarily mean a shot in the darkness, I hope somebody hears me in an emergency type thing, but an actual way to communicate to specific people on a relatively consistent basis, meaning, I have my antenna set up a certain way, I have my radio with putting out so much power, at least 100 watts or more, and I'm able to talk consistently to, let's say, my father, grandfather, mother, aunt, or a friend who's kind of preparedness minded with me, and we have a standing net that we check in, blah, 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 or it's just your group of people, your close-knit people that you work with. There is a certain level of reliability that's sometimes lacking on HF for voice comms specifically. That's kind of also its inherent disadvantage in this case is that sometimes you just can't make contacts with the people you're trying or you need very specific setups. So if I'm within 300 miles of an individual, I may want what's called a near vertical incident skywave antenna that allows me to talk to them. And then I'm also going to need at least that 100 watt radio. Voice is still probably the most convenient and easy thing to use to communicate, but it's also the thing that is the most intelligible over the air. Now, it, it goes without saying that there is no encrypted comms in amateur radio. There is some obfuscation in the form of the mode of your use, and I would put single sideband as the least obscured. It's just single sideband. Most radios have it, and it's definitely where the most ears are. Hey guys, I'll take a break in the action to say, hey, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I do a lot of ham radio topics and I live stream every week, uh, sometimes twice a week even, because I'm now hosting Ham Nation. And if I mention any products in this video, the links will be in the description so you can check them out. And there is a likelihood that it's gonna be an affiliate code. And if, so if you buy it, I do get a little bit of help there, uh, help support the channel, and I appreciate it. Now on digital, I absolutely love digital. You know I'm on FT8 all the time, and I use JSA Call and WinLink as well. And I think they are very good preparedness modes. If you're not already doing JSA Call and WinLink specifically, and you have that in your repertoire of radio that you're familiar with, you really should be. But there is an inherent downside of digital modes, and that requires a computer. You need a computer to make digital modes work, and if you're trying to put this little guy in your pocket and go out in the field, or you need this on you uh, because you're gonna be away from home base or your team or your family or whatever, then uh, having a computer that you have to drag along also to send emails well awesome in t certain types of situations is just extra weight that may not be a part of your plan. The strongest point on why digital is so powerful in amateur radio is because it is asynchronous, meaning you can set up your radio to receive with your computer or your Raspberry Pi 
that's a computer too, but you get what I'm saying. Set that up and listen and just walk away basically. Go attend to other things you need to do. If you get messages or you send messages or whatever, they all just go out and they do their thing and they go to the parties intended or they get to you and then later you will see them. You don't have to actively be listening like you would for voice and Morse code. So digital has extremely high points in terms of preparedness from my point of view particularly WinLink. I find that is just amazing. The fact that you can be in the middle of nowhere and send out an email asking for help or letting someone know that you're okay, et cetera, et cetera. So from an obfuscation point of view, digital is high, but only amongst people that are not doing digital. If you are on JSA call, anyone can copy you. Uh, the best thing you could do is just say, hey, we're going to use this frequency off the primary frequency. Set frequencies for 40 meters, 20 meters, 80 meters, etc. in JSA call and have that aligned with your family, group, the people you want to contact. And then you're obfuscated. Again, you're not encrypted. Anyone can copy your messages that you're sending out uh, via RF, but you're at least off the main thoroughfare, if you will, the main drag, where all the cars are lined up, all the other people do in digital, you're on a shortcut. It's like a backcountry road, if you will. So how does Morse code, how is that relevant? Well, pound for pound, ounce for ounce, watt for watt, Morse code is one of the most effective modes of communication that you can do without needing a computer. Just having a 5 watt radio like this KX2 or something that puts out a little bit less power like this mountain topper, you get effectively somewhere along the lines of the capability of a 60 watt to 100 watt single sideband radio. Let me state this another way. This radio is a 100 watt base station radio. It's capable of Morse code digital and single sideband. When I talk into the microphone on single sideband, that 100 watts of power, my voice is spread out over 2.4 to 3 kilohertz wide where my voice is modulated in the signal. If I'm using this radio, if I feed it 12 volts, I get 5 watts out. This 5 watts in Morse code is only going to be 200, 400, 500 hertz wide, depending on how this radio transmits, which I'm not totally sure about. But regardless, that tiny bandwidth that this transmits just a dit or a da, either an audio oscillation on or off, a switch basically, that audio has the same effectivity as basically this 100 watt base station. Meaning, this tiny radio can go literally in my pocket and I can carry it all over the place or have a nice little waterproof case that it, its antenna, its headset, its Morse code key, and a tiny little battery a nine volt in some cases this will run off of, uh, can just pack into a backpack and pretty much disappear. The kits that you can build around these little tiny radios is impressive. So if you need the most high speed, low drag, lightweight backpack or kit possible to stay in communication when way out of town, Morse code is where it's at. You can't beat this. And that's just the transmit side. The receive side, if this thing absolutely sips batteries, and all the relative tiny little radios like this sip batteries. If you'd like to hear more longer form discussion on tiny Morse code only uh, radios, I did a live stream with Adam K6ARK, well known in the amateur radio community for taking already tiny radios, making them smaller, and then going up to summits and activating them for summits on the air. And there's a whole pixie inside this Altoid small tin, along with uh, a battery underneath, uh, a port that I used for charging the battery, the SMA connector, and then the headphone jack. Switch up here, this uh, contact switch, basically turns the radio off when you close the lid and turns the radio on when you open the lid. <laughs> I love that feature. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> and the, the straight key on this is just this little piece of wire that when you press on it, it grounds out to the case of the crystal. And when it's rounding out it's in transmit mode and when it's in its resting position it's in receive mode so. really impressive what he does there's a link in the description of his channel and also the talk we did but it gets even better because this is just headphone and key little single lever key or what we call a straight key or something that are paddles which we call iambic paddles there's more varieties but with that there, it's silent and the kit is tiny. It all will go again into a little baggie or waterproof box and that's all you need to take. It's robust and it's simple. At the end of the day, a Morse code key is just two wires that you're closing the switch on to turn on the transmitter, which is this oscillating tone. 
continuous wave, as it were. So what are the inherent downsides of Morse code? Well, you need people that know Morse code to hear you use Morse code. That's the biggest downside, is that it's not uh, dying in any way. In fact, there's a bit of a resurgence going on, but you'd have to have everybody you wanted to talk to be able to receive your Morse code. If this it's important to note, too, that there is Morse code decoding. For instance, this is the PrepCom 40. I've done a video on this radio, which you can go check out, link here in the description. And basically, this is a keyboard-entered CW radio, and it will decode as well CW. So you don't have to know the code specifically to be able to use the code. Another example is the QRX Mini. This has a decode feature, which will decode whatever single band you buy and build for the radio which is uh, pretty functional. You generally have to have pretty strong or loud and solid uh, key tones for it to decode. Another good example of a very good decoding radio is the Elecraft KX2. Much more expensive than the other radios we've talked about today, but uh, should be listed here in that it is very effective and very portable as well, and gives you all the other modes if you so wanted to do that too. If this is just a random call for help, then you'd probably be okay because there's still a ton of people that are on the bands every day. You would just need to have the appropriate antenna and band to match the time of day, in, band in your radio is what I'm saying, uh, to match the time of day that you were going to be transmitting on. So its simplicity here is its strong suit. Again, your kit is super tiny that you would pack away. In fact, here's mine, just a simple mountain topper, a bit of earbuds, a wire antenna, a key, and a 9-volt battery. Yeah, a lot of these radios will run off of 9-volt batteries. But that's just my go kit. There's no reason why you can't use Morse code on your home base station radio. Uh, in fact, it's going to be even more effective there with your much better antennas, likely, and your 100 watts if you need it. Now, something to keep in mind, too, when you're talking about single sideband versus Morse code, Morse code is a silent transmission method. You can set up pretty much anywhere hidden away with a very tiny wire. You don't need a big antenna to make this uh, radio sing, and you can just key your Morse code. You don't need to talk. The downside of single sideband is if you were trying to be pretty low profile, gray man, if you will, without the logo, um, you're going to have to talk uh, even quietly, and, and that's not going to work so well. You need to talk very specifically, generally, when you talk on the ham radio to be the most intelligible. So those are just my thoughts on Morse code and its effectivity. Obviously, there are times where single sideband and digital is going to be more valuable to use when you really need it in an emergency or you know, other things like that. But for many of you, you might not have been considering Morse code, and I think you should, because you get a lot for a little bit of time and actually not a ton of money to spec out a kit that would revolve around a small portable radio that you might have on your person. And I'll leave you with this, you know, we all love our HTs, this one's no exception, right? So when we're local, around, lots of people, HTs, VHF, UHF radios, mobile radios, base station radios, are all extremely valuable and likely the thing to be used. In most common situations, emergency situations, this would be my, my first grab. However, if I'm in the middle of nowhere and comms are compromised, like the internet and uh, many other things like cell phones, which can happen when you start getting in the fringes, not so much in the middle of like suburbia where I live, then having a bit more kit, right, when you get right down to it, this radio is not very big, doesn't take up much space, is a very good thing. Anyway, I am Josh KI6NAZ. Your comments on this one would really be appreciated. Feel free to drop them below and tell me your thoughts, both good and bad on all the modes. I think it's nice to have a conversation where we talk not just about Morse code in this case, but all the useful use cases and the difficulties, the pain points that one has to go through when they are thinking about having a radio preparedness plan, comms plan, pace plan. Remember pace plan? I haven't talked about that in a while. Go watch the video I did on pace plan with Mike Glover from Fieldcraft Survival. That was really cool. Uh, that was the first time I had heard of the pace plan and why that's important, particularly as you spec out a comms system. So you have a VHF, UHF radio, something highly portable like this in your pack, and you've got a couple of letters of pace covered, and that live stream will tell you more about it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. See ya.
I am going to start from what I think is the most important reasons and work my way down. No, I'm not going to do that. That's not going to be what I do. That, stop it. Oh, washing machine, will you please stop? Please stop. 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 